Hello and welcome. I'm Prerna from BW Business World, and today we have with us Mr. Gwyn Day, who is education and early career coach. Hello, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to the viewers and to talk a little bit about education. Thank you, sir. So, so what are your views on the higher education system in India? How can the higher education be improved in the country? If any suggestions you have. I think the um, Prime Minister's focus on education and the already the very high level of students you have, obviously particularly within the technology and the science and the math side, is a huge advantage and I get uh, very many talented students. I think in answer to your question it's about the idea of flexibility, adaptability. With regards to the actual academics, there, there's absolutely no problem. You have, uh, India has, to, has top, top talent. However, when we're looking at the ability to, uh, of uh, presentation, communication, uh, the idea of being more interdisciplinary, because we've got this actual continuum and whereby you've got the going into real depth in a particular uh, subject area, for which I think the, uh, the in, um, Indian education is, is, is brilliant. Um, but then this idea of being able to move across boundaries, to move across academic boundaries, to be able to look at problems and challenges through multiple lenses. This is not always well received. And the families tend to want a very specialist subject one that they believe it will give their uh, children the best opportunities. I believe that you need to have uh, people who can think not just in a singular specialist way, but in a more nuanced and multifaceted way. All right. So what are your views on the higher education uh, globally? How is it going on in other continents and with the advent of future technologies. What I'm seeing um, at institutions around the world but also with the students that I've got on PhD programs or master's programs is the huge advent of um, uh, AR, so the augmented reality, virtual reality in terms of the classrooms, in terms of the learning experience, the way that the methodology is becoming much more personalized, and now it's really just beginning. But if we, we look three or five years down the road, the learning experiences, even from the way that we've got this, uh, um, the way children, are, or young people I should say, are doing online courses, doing the short courses, which by the way I'm a huge fan of, but they're tailoring and adapting and personalizing it. But this idea of the, uh, the group experience, it has a huge purpose, but in a much more practical sense. I love group projects. Again, this is a lot what the major employers are looking for um, and what the uh, people are going to decide to run their own startup. You need to have that, that group project where you're interacting with other people, where you're interacting with people from different cultures. But really, it's the opportunities of uh, AR, VR in education and also then tailoring uh, through some sort of data analysis of what really close analysis of the students' results, what's going well, that can be done so fantastically with, as you say, with the, with the new technology. So talking about the jobs that you have mentioned right now, so with the advent of future gen technologies, do you think that the jobs will be lessened for humans and more towards the robot side like there's there is a lot of debate going on on that this thing <laughs> excellent what are your views on excellent, excellent excellent okay uh, there is a certainly a, a huge debate and people are uh, i'm on this i do believe that there's a huge uh, societal shift taking place i think there's going to be a reorganization of many societies i think that the uh certainly i think there are going to be huge job losses uh, and the uh, across all industries as we get yes the uh, robotization for sure as we get the um, the, the use of the of the tech uh, even within the law firms because I do a lot I do a lot with banking consultancy law firms the use of smart contracts uh, that's coming that means suddenly you require far fewer lawyers you get the idea of the uh, data search um, and information and document search that used to take hundreds of junior lawyers hours and hours and hours and hours and now it's done so quickly then just not required. I think that it can be a really good thing as long as we identify a way of narrowing the inequality. I think societies and people within society will have opportunities to do far more uh, learning but also to do the sports, the arts, uh, they'll have more free time. 
That I think is a good thing. If, we, if technology is freeing people up, basically the answer is I see uh, there will be really big challenges regarding unemployment and there is going to be, it's a political and a socio-economic paradigm shift that's happening. So let's talk about the mentorship program that you provide. Mm -hmm. Please tell us about the method methodology that you follow, the curriculum that you provide, how long the course is for, just tell us, elaborate uh -huh. on this. Okay, so I would say that curriculum is a, a very 20th century word, okay, as, <laughs> as opposed to a, a 21st century. This is student-centric, so basically we identify what's the, what's the goal. Is the goal to get a job in a certain industry at the end, or is the goal to get into a top-tier university? Is it to get into a particular course? What is the actual objective? Some students or some families just want to uh, get the brand. They want the brand name. They want the student at a university. Others want the students to be doing uh, the subjects that they love and that are going to afford opportunities for growth. Uh, as I say to the parents, which doesn't always go down well, um, parents pay, but the student's my client. Um, what I'm interested in is opening up and developing the student's mind to support them in the direction that they want to go in and to achieve the goals that they want to achieve. It's unlimited support from the time they join uh, until the time that they either get into the university or get a job. And I'm available 365 days a year, okay. six in the morning until midnight, across all time zones, except when I'm traveling. So what kind of challenges do you face while mentoring the students? First issue I have is time. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, I, I have two rules when I work with, uh, with the students, uh, only two. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, first one is they book in an appointment to speak to me and they book in a 30 minute slot. If they're five minutes late, the session is cancelled, I won't be there. Uh, which usually takes about mm, two or three uh, bookings before they get it into their head that that's the way it works. I just won't be there. And they, people think, oh, no, he's just saying that. Oh, no, no, we're paying for this service. Blah. He'll be there. Mm, no, it doesn't work like that. And the same thing is if uh, I've allocated an article or I allocate a podcast or a piece of work or supporting with them, if, if they haven't done the work, if they haven't looked at the article, haven't prepared it, session is cancelled. So the first challenge is about I work with ambitious, talented young people who want to achieve goals. More of a challenge often comes from the, from the parents um, than from the students. The students, uh, smart students are amazing. I, you know, I, I love working with talented people and the, the talented students here in India, fantastic. More of a challenge can be from the parents in terms of being prescriptive in what they think is right for the student rather than trusting the student's judgment or allowing the student to develop and that's okay there are cultural aspects and that's that's okay mm. but it's not what I do it's this is about the, the child and them progressing other one is uh, t uh, timing in a different sense because of the uh, Indian timetables for exams mm. because of the, the the difference in the system there are often clashes mm. uh, that actually can create uh, serious timetabling difficulties but this is why I work with the motivated and the talented. They can do it. Thank you for talking to us. Oh, it's sir. been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for enlightening us. And I hope our viewers are also educated by this. Ah, I Have think they're seen? already pretty educated, <laughs> your viewers. I think. But anyway, I hope there's something there that was of interest. Yes. All right. Thank you.